You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at twitter.com slash options, stocktwits.com slash options, facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the optionsinsider.com. The Options Insider Radio Network is sponsored by Fidelity Investments. At Fidelity, you always get a great value for your options trades. And with powerful investing tools, that provide clear next steps, plus independent research and a wide range of investment types. We can help you make better trading decisions. Learn more about options trading with Fidelity at fidelity.com backslash options. Options trading entails significant risk and is not appropriate for all investors. Certain complex option strategies carry additional risk. Before trading options, contact Fidelity Investments by calling 800-544-5115 to receive a copy of the characteristics and risks of standardized options. Fidelity Brokerage Services, LLC, member NYSC SIPC. And now, it's time for the show that breaks down the options market from unusual activity alerts to market analysis, strategy overviews, listener questions, and much more. If it involves puts and calls, then our all-star panel will break it down. It's time to hit the option block with your host, Mark Longo from the Options Insider Media Group and co-hosts, Uncle Mike Tussaw from RCM Asset Management. Management, Andrew the Rock Lobster Joe Venazzi from OptionPit.com, and Mark the Greasy Meatball Sebastian from OptionPit.com. And now, get ready to hit the Option Block. All right, everybody, that rocking bit of tunage means it is time to rock out once again with the Option Block. Like the man said, my name is Mark Longo, coming at you. From the brand spanking new, theoptionsinsider.com, and beaming in from our Options Insider Radio Network studio. Hopefully you guys are enjoying. Maybe you can join us live. It looks like it's live. I'll have to go check and see. Uh, you never know with the, <laughs> with the Mixler, <laughs> how it's working or not, but it seems to be working. We shall see. Forthwith, throughout the show, also experiment with some other ideas to get you live streaming as well, listeners. Some, some of you have asked about Facebook and other things like that, Facebook Live, YouTube, but... Those all require video components, and those are always, uh, shall we say, a burden on a lot of our guests. So trying to keep it audio only for now, which is why we like Mixler. But, you know, we're always experimenting with other ideas. Send us your ideas. Send us your questions. Send us your comments. You know how to hit us up on all of the various social medias at Options or, of course, questions at theoptionsinsider.com. Let's see who we've got here on the old panel today, the old all-star panel, to help me answer your various queries. Let's start off. Let's go out. To that most quiet and tranquil of hamlets, known as St. Charles, where we are joined by the king of the low BBI himself, Mr. Uncle Mike Tusa from St. Charles Wealth Manager. Uncle Mike, I haven't asked you in a long time. How goes the BBI, sir? BBI has been pretty good lately. Haven't had to bust any kidneys, thankfully. But uh, with earnings coming up, that may change. We're always ready. But in the meantime... Until we get uh, more in the midst of earnings season, uh, happy to be here and uh, broadcasting from outside today. So always excited to do that. Outside? Are you on the boat cruising the beloved Fox River? No, but I'm on the shores of the Fox River. Well, there you go. Fox River adjacent, let's call it. (laughs) Beaming in here. And yeah, these aren't exactly markets that are, shall we say, uh, can't, can't take a bit of a potty break every now and then. They're not that hot and heavy. We shall see if we can get some of that later on. Maybe you don't want that. Maybe you want a nice, relaxing summer. It's up to you as we keep on rolling. Let's head on out to the sleepy shores of Maine, where we are joined once again by the Rock Lobster himself, Mr. Andrew Giovinazzi from OptionPit.com by way of Carmen Line Capital. Mr. G, I don't get to ask you very often either. How goes your BBI, sir? (laughs) Do I have a BBI? 
Now you I, do because I, I just I, coined I, it for you. I guess so. I'm uh, it uh, it you know it's a lot like uh, it's a lot like two saws right now. There's just not a lot. There's not a lot going on, and it's a little quiet. So I would say that B, I guess that's the BBI is low. The index is low. Is that would that be the right way? Yeah, actually, it should be high, right? Because the more you go, the high numerator will drive up the value of the index, correct? So, I got you. I got you. So, it so is, a day like so today, it could be like a nine numerator. because there's nothing else going on. You got nothing to do but go to the bathroom. <laughs> a day when the S&P is down 5% and nothing's going crazy, hell hitting the high water and all that good stuff, dogs and cats living together, then you got a zero, maybe a fractional BBI, you know, because you run off and run back really quick. That kind of thing. <laughs> so that's... That is the measure. That is the value of the BBI. I will not besmirch the father of the last son of Krypton by asking him such things. Instead, let's go on out to the hot seat, the Fidelity hot seat, where we are joined once again by Mr. Trey Jarrell. Trey, welcome back to the program, sir. How, how were things in the land of Krypton before you know it all went sour? Uh, going very well. I've never been more nervous for an intro uh, uh, here uh, listening to, uh, to Uncle Mike and Andrew, but uh, <laughs> things are going well. Nice, uh, unusual cold front, only about 90 degrees in Jacksonville versus our usual 100, so just uh, enjoying the beautiful day. Yeah, well, it wouldn't be the hot seat if I didn't make you sweat a little bit. That's, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, speaking of sweating, we are not doing that in Chicago. You're right, getting a little bit of a cold spell down about, oh, 25 degrees. It was 100 and 100 plus, down almost 30 degrees from where it was just a couple of days ago. Now it's a mere balmy 75. We can do all that, that all day because that means it's somewhat manageable in the studio as well, which is, which is always nice for me as we keep on rolling right on into the trading block. It's time to break down the latest topics, trades, and trends in the world of options. It's time for the trading block. All right, everybody. You know what that music means. It is time to talk some trading. What the heck is lighting up the markets on this fairly comparatively high BBI type day? Feel free. You got to go to the bathroom. Go for it. We won't hold it against you. Uh, but coming into showtime here, we're seeing most of the major indices feeling a bit of an upswell. I guess the Dow is kind of a bit of the laggard in that camp. It, it's up a comparatively small 0.01%. That's going to be up about a quarter of a percent. And the NASDAQ feeling a little bit of the love to the upside, about not quite two-thirds, but pretty close of a percent. Uh, gold taking a bit of a break, and oil actually up a little bit, but still in that mid-50s handle. We're talking WTI, of course, listeners, not Brent. We're Americans. We talk WTI, darn it. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, WTI not exactly getting a huge lift despite all of the, all of the various goings-on over there. In the Middle East, and of course, our old friend Vix Cash come into Showtime. It was exactly unched. It was fourteen and a quarter. It was pretty much fourteen and a quarter on the last show as well. Now, a few minutes into the show, it has given up a little bit of that ghost. It's off down to about thirteen ninety, so off about a third of a handle or so from where it was last show. Still not exactly kicking into high gear to the upside or the downside. Kind of just vacillating around here. Uh, VVIX kind of doing the same thing. Down slightly, down about three handles from our last show, down about 84 and a half. VVIX, of course, the volatility of volatility. And as we said many times, it's not quite there yet, but it's getting perilously close to that level down into the 70s where things start happening. Volatility starts roaring back to life. So not quite there yet, but it's, it bears watching because it has bounced on these levels before too, so. Something to pay attention to, all you volatility watchers out there, as you're counting your bathroom breaks. So let's go on to our old friend VXX, also staying in the vol realm for a second. Uh, also getting a little bit of that erosion back, down about a third of a point from our last show. At about a 23.15, still north of that 23 handle. I was talking to someone over the weekend who was talking about rolling down some VXX puts. These are the kind of parties I go to, listeners. People talk about rolling VXX puts. I don't know what type of dinner and block parties you guys go to. This is what I go to. See you, I guess we all roll in different circles. Let's keep on. Let's go back to the Rock Lobster. Rock Lobster, I can imagine you. When you go to like your, your various soirees there in the, in the hoi polloi of Maine, you also discuss rolling VXX puts, do you not? Oh, oh yeah, that's the first thing on uh, on the, our topic uh, on the on the list, you know. Because I, I mean, after all, I'm the I'm the only reason that Maine actually has an option presence. I think um, you are pretty much it. <laughs> but um, what do we we mostly talk about fish that we don't catch or um, um, 
you know, outboard motors not working, stuff like that. Uh, you you are in much higher, more rarefied uh, uh, climbs than I. You know, you know, it's inescapable you, for me. Your people, social climbing is people much know what I do, and they just come up to me with these things. You know, it's inescapable. I cannot avoid it. You know, as much as I can't try, avoid the VXX. I can't the VXX. All types of these things. You know, it's it is the cross that I, I bear, sir. And I think that this is one of the weeks where everybody's waiting for this Fed policy thing, and you know, then you have. Iran, uh, you know, I, Iran seems to be doing some funky saber rattling. Um, it kind of reminds me of like. By literally rattling it, sabers, by actually climbing aboard and seizing ships. That's, that's, that's kind of yeah. a little. That's, more, <laughs> like, that's not really rattling. That's like saber using, isn't it? Yes. I think they're. they're t- well, I think the British took one of the Iran, Iran ships. So there might be a little tit for tat going there. <laughs> yes, a little back and forth. Um, and, uh, well, I mean, they've been trying to decide on Brexit for what, two years now, three years now. (laughs) So they're still working that out. Um, I'm not, the current British government, not very impressive. (laughs) Anyway, I mean, I thought ours was bad, but then I look around, I go, oh, I guess it could be worse. Um, but, um, as far as VIX goes, uh, why are we in the fort? I guess we're just breaking up the 13 handle. Um, why are we here? Why isn't it 12? I mean, it would be 11 if the stupid Fed, you know, interest rate thing. Um, and, you know, it, the second part is rates have dropped from, what, 3% in January or in like mid-December to 2%, almost just over 2%, you know, on the 10-year. So those are, that's a big, anybody notice that? And it's still miles above everybody else um so i i don't see how rates are going to go up even if the fed wants them to um i don't i don't see it um you know half the budget increase or the the deficit right now is because we have to pay more money for debt um courtesy of you know the last god knows how many administrations that we're piling debt on um so you you've got like this strange thing where um, the market wants to see lower rates. The rest of the world already has lower rates. And at this point, as far as like VIX as a trade goes, I don't see unless there's some like off offbeat news item, uh, like this Hong Kong protest gets worse or something like that. I would think this would, that would push the Chinese more to wanting to, you know, to get rid of the, have the sort of the trade argument get settled. Um, So, I mean, there are all these little currents for volatility because basically that's what it is. I mean, the VIX is essentially just one big earnings trade around the S&P 500, you know, and you don't get earnings. What you get is headline news, you know, and a lot of trading the VIX is just handicapping headline news, uh, you know, macro events and how that could push the economy up or down. So right now... It's trading at a 14, but the market's not moving, or at the high 13s, but the market really isn't moving. Um, and we're waiting for the Fed, and I think that's how it's going to trade till the end of the week. I would almost put my crystal ball prediction in that we'd be about 40 cents from where we are right now, either up or down. I could see that easily happening. Oh, so interesting. So you're putting um, in but a, at least as of right now, there's not a bid for vol. An extra unsolicited crystal ball. I like it. I like it, sir. By the way, it sounds like sounds like your sounds like your mic is like rubbing against your shirt or something. So it might matter, or maybe your your her suit beard. So, oh, how about that? Is that better? That's a little better. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> so, uh, just don't want our listeners to to get all sorts of uh, static cling as a result of your the static electricity you're you're sending their way. But I did have someone approach me this weekend as well and and attempt to argue that you know, given all the macro currents that are going on and you know, saber rattling in the Middle East and the trade war and everything, that Vic should be like a twenty seven. You know, and I, you hear this every now and then, you know, the, they look at the, a global broad macro perspective and try to translate that into a VIX that they feel is suitable for those global currents. And, you, you know, you, it's, it's, it's a shame. At the end of the day, you have to kind of disabuse them of that notion. Say, at the end of the day, it's, it's always down to the most basic of math when it comes to VIX. You know, if it's not moving 1%, 2% a day, the VIX ain't going to reflect it. And maybe I see that a bit in the futures, obviously, if something crazy is being priced in down the road a bit. But in general, it's basic math. And it, sometimes that comes as a, a very unpleasant surprise to people out there who, who demand – that they demand that Vic sh- show them more. It's like they want it to be a political intrigue thing and everything else, you know. And it, it's just not that. I, I think there's a lot of you know, and there's people that uh, you know. They if you if you don't like the current president, 
you would you want the market to go down and vol to be really high you know it's 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 very hard for you know it's hard for people just to accept the fact that you know vix is at a relatively no no like realized vol is eight percent so the fact that we're already trading a 14 is a premium um it's just it's not it's not the premium they want um but it's premium enough so you know until something actually materializes from all this it's all it's all a lot of maybe it's a giant game of maybe a giant glame glame easy for me to say a giant game of maybe out there let's see what kind of games the fidelity folks are playing what they're slinging if they have a high or low BBI, we shall find out. Mr. Tracer, what is lighting up the tape over there in Fidelity Land today? Yeah, keeping uh, they've been keeping uh, busy here today, too, to say the least. Have a few uh, uh, names that haven't popped up in a while coming back in our top ten today. So uh, I want to start out, make a quick mention. I know uh, Colin talked a little bit about uh, Microsoft last week, one of the ones we were keeping uh, an eye on here today. Actually pulling up uh, number two today on our orders by uh, Fidelity customers. So uh, came in with a nice uh, earnings beat on Thursday, came in at $1.37 versus uh, $1.21. And, um, you know, stock really had a, a, a big open on Friday morning, but then, uh, you know, really sold off uh, here throughout the day. But uh, today, looking uh, uh, like things are a little bit uh, uh, off to a more positive start for uh, Microsoft, up $1.66 right now at one thirty eight. 27. So looking at the chart, right, it's been a steady uptrend uh, here. Nothing uh, showing the uptrend uh, breaking as of yet. So, uh, you know, certainly positive from a chart set stand uh, at this standpoint. Uh, Fidelity customers uh, split on it today, right at 50-50 between buys and sells. So no uh, big indication one way or the other from uh, from them. Uh, option market pretty interesting today, too. Uh, you know, uh, about 1.37 call to put ratio with uh, call buyers leading the way about 41,000 versus 33,000 uh, sellers here. So I wanted to do a follow-up on, uh, on that one uh, here. Obviously, know we were looking at it uh, last week. But you know, a couple other names that uh, hadn't popped up in a while today. Number three on our list uh, today was uh, actually Micron uh, Technology. So um, interesting uh, news report here today uh, from Goldman Sachs, uh, noting that the uh, chip in- inventories are fail- uh, falling, excuse me, and the uh, market seems to like that here right now. Uh, Micron at uh, 4703 uh, up a dollar uh, fifty one. Uh, Fidelity customers uh, split dead fifty fifty on this one here as well. Not getting a strong indication or buys or, or sells. Uh, you know, hear from the Fidelity customers today. Um, been a really interesting chart here on uh, on Micron uh, here though, right? So back on June twenty six, that earnings was trading around thirty two dollars. Up today at forty seven. So just in a couple of weeks, almost fifty percent increase in price. So big quick uh, uh, move here on uh, on Micron. Really not to that point where it's at its uh, um, you know highs from 2018. You have the stock as high as 64, so still a little ways to go to get to that point. And sitting at an interesting level uh, here right now may have been a, kind of a support resistance point. We saw at this 47 level through um, held support a couple of times in summer of 2018, failed to break through it at uh, resistance in September of 2018, and sitting right at it uh, here right now. Uh, option uh, paper on here, uh, also heavy on the call side, a uh, dead even two to one uh, ratio calls to puts uh, right now. Um, but call sellers actually leading the way, 53,000 versus uh, 47,000 uh, call buyers uh, here today uh, with implied volatility. Still, uh, you know, holding relatively low on it here at 40, uh, 40 and a half right now, 52 week close, about 34. So still not lower. Uh, percentile here. So this is one that hadn't popped up, uh, you know, here with the top five and fidelity customers as well. So interesting seeing that one back uh, here today. Uh, another one popping in here today that we haven't talked about in a little while at fourth uh, on the list of uh, Beyond Meat. So big, big day for uh, Beyond Meat. They're trading at one ninety six uh, twenty seven right now, up nineteen dollars and forty four cents. So uh, big news there was uh, Blue Apron. Uh, you know, I mentioned some news here that uh, they're going to add Beyond Meat onto their menu. So both stocks up. Uh, Fidelity customers, um, you know, certainly uh, interested more on the Beyond side here. Didn't see a Blue Apron uh, topping uh, the list here, but uh, Beyond did. Uh, also dead even 50-50 between buys and sells uh, from Fidelity customers here today. Uh, also heavy on the calls here, looking at the option market on Beyond. 102,000 calls to 58,000 puts, so about one75 uh, to one uh, again, uh, call buyers uh, leading the way here about twenty eight thousand uh, call buyers to twenty two uh, thousand uh, here as well. So this is putting it, 
you know, very near the uh, the uh, all time highs on it, right back on June eighteenth, it hit that two hundred one eighty eight. So didn't quite get there, but it's closest it's uh, it's been. Um, big up day uh, here. Imagine a lot of uh, short covering uh, here on this one, but uh, one we'll be paying attention to throughout the uh, throughout the day. One last one I wanted to mention. This is one that uh, I don't think I've ever seen in the uh, in the top ten uh, here before. Uh, so we always got to come with uh, you know one a little bit more interesting name that doesn't pop up too often. But coming in at number eight was CrowdStrike Holdings. Uh, here that was uh, ticker CRWD. Uh, trading today at eighty seven dollars and thirty six cents, up three eighty six uh, here on the day at uh, all time highs right now, which uh, uh, doesn't go back a, a long ways. This uh, stock actually IPO'd in June at uh, thirty four dollars. Uh, was a cloud based security uh, company here, and uh, just had uh, earnings um, uh, last Thursday uh, here, and a lot of enthusiasm uh, here from the earnings. They uh, uh, reported much better than expected guidance for uh, July quarter as well as for uh, fiscal year ending uh, 2020 uh, here as well. So uh, huge option volume on it today, coming in total volume at 13,000. Uh, so uh, maybe not as big as some of the other names, but it's 90-day average volume is only about 7,500. So a little bit, a little bit more than usual, about 3,400 uh, call buyers. Uh, they were leading the uh, the way to uh, today. Um, uh, IV sitting right now about 58 at the uh, very low end of its uh, long existence of uh, a month and a half uh, here right now. Um, thought thought this was an interesting one. Hadn't uh, heard too much about it with an IPO, uh, you know, this uh, this fresh and uh, kind of cracked that top 10 uh, here at Fidelity uh, here today. So I uh, definitely wanted wanted to always bring something a little bit new uh, here on the show that uh, that we see up there. But uh, that's what we had on the other uh, radar here from the uh, Fidelity customer standpoint today. Thanks for that newness, sir. We like a little bit of new, new car smell, new car shine here on the old option block. You're right. We don't, uh, we don't see those, those tickers too often. Let's see the tickers we are seeing right now. Let's see if our, the top 10 for the market lines up with Fidelity here. Let's go number 10 here. Uh, good old Tesla. Can't have a top 10 without Tesla in there somewhere. Buck 12 on the tape. As of just about right now, these are very recent numbers. Number 9, AMD, buck 24. On the tape, number eight, Snap, good old Snap, buck thirty nine on the tape. Number seven, the aforementioned Beyond, one hundred sixty one thousand contracts on the tape. Sixty four percent of that coming on the calls. Actually, not the most call loving paper we're seeing on the tape here. We we'll get to that in a little bit. Beyond, like you mentioned, there, uh, Trey, up about twenty handles or so, <laughs> uh, right about right now. So that puts it up about nearly eleven percent just on the news. Blue Aprons using interesting. There, I think they're already having supply problems. Are they going to be able to fill Blue Apron orders as well? Either way. Clearly, uh, the market liking what they're hearing out there. Number six, good old AT and T, a buck seventy eight on the tape. Number five, Facebook, one hundred ninety four thousand. Number four, Microsoft, a buck ninety six. Kill still can't break two hundred k. Got to go all the way up to number three to break two hundred k today. So again, somewhat quiet day out there. Two hundred twenty three thousand over there for Micron. Numero dos there. Apple, a rare day out of the number one spot. 237,000 contracts on the tape for them. And rounding out our top 10 there, number one, Netflix, an even quarter of a million contracts on the tape. Let's see what's taken the most biased. And actually, it's Facebook, 82% of the, of the paper, nearly 200,000 contracts coming on the call side of the ledger, followed hot and heavy by Snap with 79% uh, of their 139,000 contracts coming on the call side. Beyond uh, par- comparatively paltry, 64%, so a little bit more... Even flow going on out there. Speaking of flow, not a lot going on in the indices. VIX, 80,000 coming into showtime. About 400K is the ADV out there. SPY flirting with a million. ADV, about 2.1 million. SPX flirting with half a million. ADV, about 1.2 million. The Q is hitting 210. Uh, the ADV, about 575 out there. The Russell, though, I, AK, at least IWM, doing some action out there. 345,000 contracts on the tape coming into showtime. I'm sure there's more now. 285 is the is the ADB out there, so something is afoot. The game is afoot out there in IWM. Let us pull it up really quickly. I believe when I when we saw it earlier when the scan brought it up, it was mostly mostly puts lighting up the day. Let's see if that's the case. Yes, of that volume, 69,000 coming on the call side of the ledger, and 293,000 coming. So obviously, a little bit more has gone up since then on the put side. So pretty active put day. For good old IWM, Mr. Uncle Mike, sir, what is lighting up your own tape out there in the land of St. Charles, sir? 
Well, in addition to what was already mentioned, uh, I would say silver at this point, uh, with the threats of war, not war, but with craziness going on in the Middle East with um, uh, President Trump and the Iran- Iranians uh, not exactly getting along. Uh, silver has definitely caught a bit over the course of the last week, and it's up over 1% on the day-to-day, so <clears throat> I think that is kind of a rush to um, the paranoid buy. Oh, no, everything is bad. Let's buy some silver. So uh, that's one thing. Of course, Apple uh, above the 206 mark again, so that's making a climb up again. Uh, Facebook's actually up 1.5% on the day, so there are some movers on the day-to-day. Uh, just as a whole, we're not making a huge amount of progress with the marketplace uh, one way or another. I mean, we are up um, a third of a percent approximately in the S&P, uh, but we don't have too much movement on the day, and I, I expect that to kind of be the same. I agree with Andrew in that uh, we're, wait, we're, in the, we're playing wait and see right now in the marketplace. Uh, what's going to be interesting over the course of the next couple weeks uh, is the fact that we're not only looking at we're not only in an earnings season, but we're also uh, watching macro events. Oftentimes, when we're in earnings season, we say on the show, "Well, it's going to be nice to not have to analyze macro stuff. We can just focus on stocks for a change." Well, not necessarily the case right now. We got a trade war with China, we got the Fed, and we got earnings all in one false swoop. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see where this market goes and uh, how it gets there over the course of the next couple of weeks. The next couple of days, eh, anybody's guess at this point. I'm not sure I'll see a ton of movement on it, but uh, we will see, as always. Where we're going next is no mystery. We're heading right on into the odd block. It's time to break down the most interesting, unusual, and downright questionable options activity that's been identified by theoptionsinsider.com. It's time for The Odd Block. Let's get funky. Let's get weird. Let's get a little whimsical time to get into the odd block. Before we kick off the names that, that fired off our, our eye of Sauron, one that maybe should be in here, Mr. Rock Lobster, is one I was just kind of just talking about. I was just, I was just doing a little digging while Uncle Mike was talking, because I was trying to see what the heck is lighting up the tape out here in the Russell 2000 that is pushing it way beyond its ADV on a relatively quiet day. It seems like coming at showtime now, we're, or right now about showtime, actually, we're seeing Russell 2000 at 15 and a half, so up about two points, so. Not exactly a huge day out there in Russell 2000 from an underlying perspective, but the options are tearing it up. Looks like it's the 146-143 put spread expiring on August 23rd, and uh, that is not, I don't believe, the standard. I believe that is a weekly. Yes, that is a weekly, and so that's one week beyond standard expiration going up 85,000 to 22,000, so you got over 100,000, 107,000 of this put spread going up. So 214 total listeners in this one spread on both legs. Looks like going up for 33 and about 31 cents paper buy-in. So opening on both legs as well. Mr. Rock Lobster, let's start there. This one, this one blow your skirt up at all? Looks like we got about a, a pretty substantially out-of-the-money put spread going up a little bit more than a month away with uh, size open in here, the downside here in the Russell. You know, Russell's been been acting kind of weird lately it has been kind of uh, moving to the downside in the days the rest of the market is is moving up so maybe our friend here is on to something what do you think isn't the russell like i think the russell's down quite a bit like in the last it is yes months. isn't it down like eight or nine percent or something like it hasn't really recovered uh with the rest of the market i, I was just looking I, I would just pull that up i thought that was actually kind of odd it's sort of the the small, I think it was in the Wall Street Journal, actually. It was the, the small stocks have been left behind. Um, I wonder if uh, somebody's buying those puts. They think well, there's more sadness on the, you know, because small stock is, you know, miners and oil exploration and, you know, small banks and stuff like that. Um, and really been kind of under, you would think some money would be finding the Russell at some point. You know, and that tends to what happens, you know, you know, tech is just, you know, it's almost at its all time highs again, if it's not already. Um, and we're only a few handles short in the S&P 500s, but the Russell's definitely off. Um, so I, it, it does look like a bit of an opportunity, but 
um, at least to kind of see if it catches up. I'm, I'm, I'm curious and I'm not sure, like the low interest rate environment, I don't know how that hurts small companies, but I, I find it odd or just money is going to, you know, big technology. Everybody jumped back into the Googles and the Facebooks and the Amazons when they just got, when they got torched in uh, December and January. So, but the Russell has, dollars have not come back into there. No, no love for the Russell 2000. It has been interesting to see. Yeah, that, they, you know, the conventional wisdom coming into the trade war at the start of it was that Russell 2000 would fare fairly well in a mostly macro international driven uh, trade conflict. And yet it seems like the opposite has been the case, which is interesting and fascinating. Clearly, some size money being put to work on that downside opening. I thought it was a roll, but it's not a roll. It's opening on both legs. So well, I might have to put that one in the to be watched category. Let's say, Mr. Rock Lobster, as we keep on rolling into what our actual eye of Sauron. Sometimes I love doing the on the fly stuff, too. It's kind of fun. Let's kick things off. This is the name we have not, I don't think we've ever talked about this one. I would certainly probably remember this one. This is Geo Group, ticker symbol Geo, appropriately enough, G E O. This is a, a private prisons company. They're a correctional institutions company specializing in privatized corrections, detention, and mental health treatment. So there you go, private prisons company. Let's see what's been up to in this sector. Not a sector we get to delve into very often, a contentious one, uh, to say the least. Hey, let's see. A year ago, they were trading about 26 bucks, so nearly 10 bucks north of where they are right now. They kind of languished in that area, kind of drifted down to about 23, 22, and then Christmas Eve hit, and then all bets were off down to about 19. Then they kind of rebounded again up to about 24, and they kind of sold off again. It's kind of been an up and down time, a little bit of a roller coaster here. Sold off again in March, down to about 18 and change, and then they rallied back up again, down to up to about nearly 24 again. Something like 24 has been the upper bound of late before selling off again where they are right now, 16.83, off another half a buck today, or about 2.5%. So it's been an interesting kind of range bound period here for at least the last six months or so here. For Geo, I'm going to guess all this downside is going to let up some puts. That does appear to be the case. Our Eye of Sauron finding us here. Some Geo, 14 puts going up 15,000 times for a buck and a quarter. This is right on the offer. They were a buck 15 at a buck 25. This was opening over there on the Philly. Worth noting, obviously Jan, so there's going to be some earnings. And the next earnings are July 30th here. So not, not quite specifically and earnings play, but they're going to be a few cycles baked in there. So here we go. Downside. By the way, this is headquartered in Boca Raton for all you fancy folks out there. Boca Raton, Florida. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, this, this is an interesting one. Mr. Rock Lobster looks like someone not feeling the love. They're feeling the concern here for some downside, paying a buck and a quarter. So you're talking like 7% or so for a six, not even a $17 stock. Uh, to hedge it at the 14 handle, so a buck and a quarter, so they're out at 1275. This is uh, it's a lot of downside to pack in here for about a $16 and change name. What what say you, sir? A lot of concern from now till Jan. Yeah, I think uh, this is one where I, I wonder if this is like the you know I think Elizabeth Warren, you know the Senate that like, she's running for president, she wanted to abolish all private prisons. Um, and I, I think if you trace her, you know, like her, she's kind of running up in the polls a little bit or whatever. That might be people just getting out of this, you know, maybe the private prison business is not a good business to be in. Um, and, but usually, you know, you're buying a put like that. That's, you know, the stock's already down, what, 50% or more. That's a, that's a pretty long, uh need some real bad things to happen at this point so it's a uh, what i would say it's ambitious put to buy very ambitious yeah i think of the vice around around the show and right i probably say why don't you just sell it <laughs> at that point if you're if you're spending that much on puts stock that is not quite 10 bucks but fairly close you might just say maybe maybe you should get the heck out of dodge you clearly got some concerns of course obviously there are reasons why you can't sell out there taxes corporate restrictions those sorts of things but still, you know, on the face of it, he probably would be. I have to put words in his mouth, but I'm going to do it anyway. I'm going to say he's going to say, you probably should sell that. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's a, all the way out to 1275. You got some concerns. And you're right, it is a very contentious segment of the market right now, depending on which side of the aisle you're looking at, uh, how people tend to view that one. But if you can buy calls 
on being contentious, that would certainly be on the upside of that. But downside seems like is the order of the day for the near term here. In Geo, let's move on to a less contentious name. Let's go out to Pulte Group. This is a construction company, ticker symbol PHM. Trading today, 33.65, up about not quite half a buck, but close to it. That's about one and a quarter percent. A year ago, they were trading a few bucks shy where they're right now, right around 31. And then they sold off in the nadir there of Christmas Eve down to, let's see, where were they? About almost a little bit shy of 21. So they sold off a pretty good clip. And then uh, about 10 handles. And they rallied back up over the course of about a month, not even three weeks into early Jan. They were trading about 29 again. So they got back up there pretty quick. Then they kind of been vacillating in about the 26 to low 30s range. Until recently, they kind of had another little bit of an upswing up to where they are right now, about 33.66 coming into showtime. What do we see out here? This seems like it's a recipe for some call love, and that does appear to be what we've got on the docket here going out. These are weekly. These are aug seconds. These are pretty close, pretty close to home. Interesting. The aug expiring on the second, 10,000 of the aug expiring on the second, 35 calls going up for 45 cents. Uh, not quite lifting the offer, so a little bit off the offer. These are forty cents at forty-seven, getting ten thousand done at forty-five. Not a bad print there, opening over there on the Philly. So this is one, Mister Rock Lobster. Seems like someone looking like they're looking for a little bit of a run here in just the next couple of weeks, next ten days in Pulte, putting forty-five cents to work ten thousand times to see just that. Looking at this chart at least over the last year their 52 week high is 3403 so this guy's looking for a, a bit of a, a bit of a move to the upside sir this is aggressive what say you about these very near term somewhat uh, optimistic calls in Pulte group what say me oh, well you know you got you got the fed's going to come out whether they're going to do something with rates like the 30th and the 31st and those are expiring august august 2th um so uh, I should say August second, but the um, you know the builder group, home builders, interest rate sensitive. You know the algos love all the interest rate sensitive stuff. If they cut fifty basis points, which you know I'm still trying to figure out how they're gonna how they're gonna word all that. <laughs> they could they could just say hey, it's just general uncertainty. But anyway, I think you know interest rate sensitive stuff might get a little pop and. Um, that, that to me would be the recipe for that one right there. That's an expensive roll of the dice if it doesn't go your way. I mean, that's not going to break a big fund. Yes, it is. But that's, that's, uh, I, I don't know. I, I see what you're saying, and I, I probably agree with the, that's probably the sentiment behind it. I probably would think of other ways to, uh, to probably do that, not just throwing away 45 cents 10,000 times, which could easily come to pass uh, in that one quite soon. We're going to put that one in the 2B watch category. We're going to come back to this one, see if our friend... Threw away 45 cents, or maybe the Rock Lobster thinks it's, uh, it's savvy. Where do you fall on that, listeners? Uh, let's, uh, let's let us know while we keep on rolling to our final name here. Get an extra. Get a bonus one today. We threw in the Russell for you. Uh, let's go Cloudera here, rounding out our, our three naughty bears we're highlighting here on the old odd block today. Cloudera, ticker symbol CLDR. This is a U.S.-based software company that, surprise, surprise, operates in the cloud. <laughs> and uh, let's see. Today they're trading a whopping five dollars and eighty six cents, and let's see. There we go. A year ago, oh, this one's not looking good, listeners. A year ago they were trading nearly three x that, nearly fifteen bucks, and then they kind of shot up over the course of that year, up to about twenty bucks. Looks like they hit their high close to it around maybe uh, looks like September or October in that range. Can't see the exact date, but it's around that level. And then they pretty much have been on the dark side ever since, selling off again. By the end of October to 13 and a quarter, by November to about 10, and then by the Nader day. Actually, the Nader wasn't the Nader for them. They just hit, they just stayed at 10. And they actually rallied a bit in March up to 15 again. And ever since then, in March, they've kind of just been looking pretty rough, including looks like they might have had earnings recently because they just fell off a cliff from about 9 down to 5 back on the 5th of June. So not exactly been a good banner time here for the cloud software player Cloud era. Let's see what's going on out here. Hmm, got some call of going on. 9,000 of the SEP seven halves going up for 20 cents. These calls are 15 cents at 20. This guy's taking them all down 9,000 times there. 
for 20 cents. He's like, how are they now? And let's see. These are SEP 7 halves. The earnings are September 4th. So this is a straight-up upside earnings play here on Cloudera. This thing needs to run a bit. Let's see. These are 7 and a half, so not quite 2 bucks, about a buck 70 or so. This thing needs to move in order for these, these calls to, to make a living. So interesting. And that's obviously, by the time earnings come out, most of that decay will already probably have come to pass. But still, you know, you got that little earnings pump, so that might keep you alive a little bit longer. Maybe you get a little bit of a free swing at the bat. Not quite free, but low-cost swing at the bat until earnings, and you get out maybe before the event. Maybe you pull the old Rock Lobster. What say you, sir, Mr. Rock Lobster? What do you think of these uh, 20 cents, nearly 2 bucks out of the money on a $6 stock? You know, it's and they're buying September, right? I think this is a very uh, – it's, re- it's a reasonable shot for a trade, don't you? I mean, if you're going to use option leverage and buy 20-cent options – um, I don't know if Cloudera is getting buried by Amazon or not. But it sounds like it, it could be in the Amazon, the the list of bodies that Amazon is buried is a long one. Um, but I, I could see that if you want the leverage, to me that's a uh, that's a it's a pretty decent leverage trade. You know, you get a lot of bang for your buck for twenty cents. So uh, with enough time, I think that you got a shot for that to work out. You know, on the surface, it seems like it wouldn't be a rock lobster play. But when I was looking at it, I thought, you know, this might actually fall into your category because you like those. I know you like those little pre-earnings plays. And and uh, depending on when he closed it out, obviously. So you know what? That's you know what's going to happen to this one now. We have to know when he closes it out. So we have to come back to this one. That's another to be watched today. A lot going on. Russell puts have to be watched. We're watching everything. We are the eyes of the market. Nothing escapes us here except for the endless scratching of the rock lobster as we keep on rolling right on into... The strategy block. It's time to dispense options, wit, wisdom, and education. It's time for the strategy block. All right, listeners, it is time to arm you with a bit of strategy, maybe a lesson or two in how to approach various aspects of options trading. You know, Trey... Rock Lops and I had to spend a lot of time talking about and finding and scanning for interesting options that might be worthy of at least analyzing, let alone trading. Uh, so this is an interesting topic, how to go about finding such things. And it sounds like the folks over Fidelity have that at the, on the brain these days as well. Is that the case, sir? Uh, it sure is, yeah. I think uh, you know many of us have fallen in that habit where we find ourselves uh, you know trading just a couple of uh, – uh, indices uh, over and over again. And, uh, you know, at some point you may run into a time where, uh, you know, that particular index, uh, you know, isn't giving you the action that, that you're used to, right? Maybe you're not seeing uh, vol the way it's, uh, way it's uh, been before. Or maybe your risk tolerance have changed. So, you know, I wanted to spend a little bit of time just talking about some of the different uh, scanners and, and screeners and some of the different ways we think about it. There's uh, too many variations of a scan to, to really run through all at once. We could spend hours on the uh, the topic, but wanted to talk about just some of the benefits and, and drawbacks of some of the few types uh, here and maybe give you some things to, uh, you know, for everyone to think about when you're starting to build your scans uh, here overall. So one of the things that, uh, you know, we often teach to on the strategy desk, right, if you're putting on an option trade, we believe you should have an outlook on price, time, and volatility. Well, why is this? Well, you know, these are the three main components that make up an option premium uh, here and what's going to change our option premium. So when we start to think about uh, what different scans and screeners are going to provide for us, well, they're usually going to uh, you know, give us some input back uh, on one or multiple of these, uh, of these three things. You know, the other thing we always want to uh, consider, right, even though we formulate our outlook on price, time, and volatility, hey, there may be a, an option strategy that matches that uh, perfectly, but we want to make sure that that strategy also matches our risk tolerance as well, right? Not all of us uh, want to have the, uh, the risk of a naked call, uh, you know, or a, a naked put, and we need to manage that uh, here appropriately. But jumping into the scans, one of the first ones I like to always spend a moment of time in is, you know, that first bit of outlook on price. Uh, you know, and this is an easier one maybe from those of you that are just coming to options from, uh, you know, maybe trading stocks or ETFs. Maybe you have a good uh, plan in place, uh, you know, for finding those uh, types of uh, investments. But as you go to options, maybe you steer away from it. Very important to understand price is always a uh, you know, big component of option pricing. Um, and we can do a lot of our scans, right, based on the underlying price. So one of the things that uh, I know we spend a lot of time uh, that our strategy desk will bring up on the show are looking at charts. 
Uh, you know, we have stock screeners and filters available that help us identify things like a trend. We can look for stocks that are trending up, increases in price. We can look for things like price crossing above or staying above our moving average. And the idea is finding stocks that are trading in a, in a given trend, and we're trying to take advantage of that here as well. If we're using some of these technicals, you know, maybe we want to add some additional components to our chart, looking at things like momentum, volume, uh, or volatility to help us with that final confirmation. Um, but it gives us a good starting place here, right, to build our option strategies off of. You know, we do get quite a few people that, uh, you know, will call the trade off of uh, fundamentals as well. Uh, this becomes a little bit harder to translate to options. Can't tell you how many times we've had the uh, the phone call of, you know, hey, I think XYZ stock is uh, is really great. Uh, I bought an option that expires in an hour. Uh, I'm not sure why it's not going up. So you have to keep in mind, if we have a fundamental story, if we're basing our decisions off of the company's books, off of earnings reports, these trades tend to be longer term. You know, if you're translating that to options, right, you can use those types of scan, uh, scans. But, you know, make sure you're looking at a further dated option that's actually going to uh, cover some of the time it needs to uh, uh, actually anticipate those price changes. You know, finally, ETFs become popular as well for those that maybe have a more macro outlook, right? Maybe you want to capture what's happening in a given sector or area of the, uh, the market, right? A simple scan can find you some, uh, uh, you know, particular ETF that's going to, uh, to match that, um, and give us kind of the next steps here as well. Now, we'll also say when we are running these, some of these basic scans off of price, well, what are we really lacking? Well, uh, you know, understanding of some of the pieces of the actual option market for that underlying. So one of the things we're missing is a volatility assumption, right? So maybe we found that stock that meets our trend. Well, we want to go in. Let's see what's happening with implied volatility, right? Is it increasing, decreasing, or staying sideways uh, here as well? We also need to check the liquidity of the option market, right? This is a kind of a drawback. You might find that the stock that's hitting the trend, you go look at the option market. Uh, maybe it's not a penny pilot. Maybe the spreads are wide enough to drive a truck through. You know, maybe we don't have as much strikes and expirations uh, here for it. You know, so we need to be paying attention and doing some additional analysis, uh, you know, when we're doing this type of scam. So jumping over to the option market, right, we have a ton of different things we can scan there. I'd say some of the more common ones that uh, come up uh, you know, the uh, odd block here, you look for a lot of, uh, you know, maybe those interesting volume things like, uh, you know, a higher uh, volume compared to, um, you know, prior volume, right, that might point out some interesting ideas out there, finding some different, um, you know, high volume on a particular uh, strike or expiration that's not there. Uh, the other common ones are volatility assumption scans, right? So we have scans out there that will run for increasing or decreasing volatility. You can look for things like IV versus HV. Um, you know, for those of you that are option sellers by nature, right, we see a lot of that, you know, interest in that high volatility, right? Want to sell that juice uh, here as well, bringing that uh, premium, um, which is not a bad way to go about it. But what I'd like to say with those scans, you know, take a little bit of extra time uh, with those too. Make sure you understand where vol is going, right? Are you at a point where you think it's peaked and started to come back down? Uh, or can that still in keep increasing, right? Do we have earnings announcement coming up, dividend announcements that are coming up uh, here as well? Uh, or... You know, add some of those chart components here as well, right? Uh, you know, just because you have that uh, high implied volatility, we don't necessarily need to fight the trend. You can pick which side of the market that uh, you'd like to go on uh, here as uh, as well. Um, you know, like I said, there's no really right or wrong scan out there, but we have so much data out there. You have to understand every scan is maybe building off one or two components. Um, you know, take a couple extra steps. You know, understand whether other pieces of the puzzle are missing from that price, time, and volatility. Spend some extra research on there as well. And, uh, you know, let that build the, uh, the right strategy out there. Uh, of course, there's so many of these scans out here. We have a ton of Fidelity that are already pre-built for you, you know, based on uh, even strategies you're, that you're interested in. So take advantage of the tools that are out there, um, but uh, take some steps to, um, to complete the analysis. So that was just a couple of thoughts I had. Uh, I think it's always an interesting area. So many different ways to uh, find ideas uh, out there, but a few of the things that uh, I like to take a look at when going through scans. Uncle Mike, this is obviously uh, an interesting area. We could probably spend many hours on it, but uh, you know, you, you, you like to utilize maybe some different approaches when you're, when you're determining your underlying for how to go about trading. I know you have your, your stalwarts, you know, your spies, your SLBs, your apples. But when you go beyond that, maybe some clients are coming to you saying, hey, I need to, I need to find some, some good options to, to or underlying, let's just say, to trade options on. How do, you, how do you usually advise them? How do you usually go about that? Well, I think the, the most important thing that I'd like to emphasize, especially when you're scanning for certain things, uh, would be if volatility is high, 
it's high for a reason. You're looking for being a premium seller, and oftentimes uh, we always talk about the dark side of premium selling. This is what lures people to the dark side. Wow, I can sell a covered call and get a 12% rate of return for just one month, and the stock doesn't even have to move. How can I lose? Well, if volatility is that high, there's probably reasons it is that high. Now, it could be good, it could be bad, but just have an understanding of what the reason that volatility is that high before you get into it. Uh, it might be still beneficial for you to do, it might not be, but just understand why that reason is as such. The other thing that I would recommend when you're doing a scan, if all of a sudden you see something to where you have a mispriced option to where the calls or, or I'm sorry, the puts are way more than the calls or something like that, there's a reason for it typically. Now, occasionally you can get into some type of a conversion or a box spread and get a guaranteed rate of return. Uh, just to give you an idea of it, in the 15 or so years that I've been trading options, uh, I think it's happened to me maybe like two or three times that I happen to just catch something like, oh, wow, let's do this. Uh, so it's not going to happen that often. But what you need to be aware of is when you do see something like that, that why is that the case? Is there a dividend coming up? Uh, is there something along the lines to where there's going to be a stock split? Uh, if it looks too good to be true, sometimes scanners can pull things up like that. And I love scanners. I think they're a wonderful thing. But just when you see things that look too good to be true, especially when doing option scans, look into why it is that way before taking any action. And that's the thing that I would have to add to uh, Trey's wonderful segment. Always one to grow on from Uncle Mike. As we keep on rolling into our final segment, it is time to go around the block. It's time to tell you what we'll be watching on our trading screens until the next episode. It's time for Around the Block. All right, everybody. Welcome to the portion of the show where we tell you what we're keeping an eye on. And it is a hot and heavy week. Fang stocks reporting this week. So look out above and indeed below. Uh, let's kick things off. Big names reporting today. We got TD Ameritrade after the bell. Whirlpool, Logitech uh, for all your peripherals. Tomorrow we got Snap and the former Stealth Apple, not too stealthy anymore, Chipotle. I got JetBlue and Visa popping off tomorrow. Discover as well. Wednesday, a lot of name, a lot of people have been watching of late. Our neighbors across the street, they're Boeing before the bell, AT&T before the bell, Caterpillar there as well. After the bell on Wednesday, you got Facebook, you got Tesla, PayPal. Pick a name, you got them popping off. Then Thursday, you got some more. You got Nokia before the bell and 3M. Raytheon and Southwest after the bell. You got good old Amazon, a nice $2,000 name. Uh, Alphabet, Intel. So a lot of fang names popping off. That's not enough Friday. You got Twitter and Mickey D's. And Goodyear if you're into the tire category. So a lot of big names popping off. A lot to keep an eye on. Again, the earnings move reports all up, all available for free for you over there at theoptionsinsider.com. Get on over there. Check out what the, what the straddles are pricing, what the real dollars are telling you in the marketplace, as well as what they priced in in the past. You have to arm yourself with that data if you're going to be trading or analyzing these names during this time of year, especially. All right, let's go back around the horn the way we came. Let's start with Uncle Mike, sir. What is on your radar for the rest of this week? Well, quite a bit. I mean, this is unique in that we have macro along with earnings coming out, and a lot of things could go either way. Uh, with Bang Dang's reporting, with the Fed looking to do something with rates, with uh, you know, uh, I'm going to be curious to see in the Fed statement why we lowered rates. Um, somewhere in parentheses, you could say because the president called me and said he'd beat me up if I didn't, or why would you, why did why'd you lower rates? Uh, I think that's probably one of the real reasons with which why he's going to do it, but. Um, no, I think that we have a lot going on, and uh, we're below the 3,000 mark in the SPX. So we're going to see if we can make a run to push through that and see where this goes. See where it goes indeed. Trey, what are you watching to see where it goes this week, sir? Yeah, earnings, earnings, and more earnings. So uh, always a fun time uh, for us here. A lot coming up. So a couple you mentioned that I'm uh, going to have my eye on here tomorrow, uh, Chipotle, uh, one that we usually get a few phone calls uh, on here from uh, time time from time to time, but it had a, it was a real strong uh, you know uptrend uh, here recently. 
you know, trading right now at 747, very close to those uh, all-time highs. Uh, really had to claw its way to, to get back there, uh, back from 2015, but approaching that level, which I thought was interesting. And option market looking for a little over a $46 uh, you know, expected move based on that at the money straddle here for this uh, this week. So be very curious, uh, you know, if this report is enough to, to take it to those all time highs or if it stalls out uh, here. Um, we keep an eye on that one tomorrow. And the other one tomorrow, too, that uh, um, I was interested in here, too, was uh, was Snap uh, here as well. So the uh, at the money straddle price, just a little over two dollars uh, here right now. Uh, today's uh, uh, option volume I thought was fairly interesting so far, about uh, just under a four to one uh, call to put ratio right now, uh, with a ton of volume on that uh, call seller, sixty nine thousand call sellers to thirty five thousand uh, call buyers. So I thought that was kind of interesting uh, action from the uh, the option market uh, here on that one. Uh, you know, and this is one that's had a big move since the uh, the end of the year, right? Uh, you know, trading. Uh, right around that five dollar mark uh, up here to uh, about fifteen seventy eight here recently started to come back down uh, here in trading at fourteen dollars and fourteen cents right now so we keep an eye on that one uh, here tomorrow as well and last but not least mr rock lobster sir what is lighting up your tape for the rest of this week well i think i mean it's earnings right earnings this week f o m c next week so so far the tech i mean if you if Microsoft is any indication. Tech is looking, you know, pretty good all of a sudden. Um, the trade war is not. I think it's like I think it's probably hurting farmers, but at the same time, I think they're, uh, you know, the government's been doling out the money. So, I, I it just, I, it feels like everybody's kind of expecting the worst. So, I, it will not surprise me if we see some kind of crazy upside next week. So, because earnings don't look so bad. I mean, the banks came in pretty good, so. You know, uh, usually good bank earnings means that somebody somewhere is making money. Not Deutsche Bank, but everybody else, maybe. In the, in the <laughs> everybody <space>. but Deutsche Bank. <laughs> they can't figure out how to make money in those there banking waters. Unfortunately, listeners, that music means we've come to the end of another epic sojourn through the world of options. But before we go, let's go back around the horn, see what everyone's got cooking up. That may interest you. Let's start. Let's go back just the way we came. Let's start with the Rock Lobster. Sir, if folks are intrigued, they want to learn more, they want to check out a webinar, maybe an in-person mentoring or a virtual mentoring, maybe they want to go into a pitch chat, maybe they want to come to Chicago for an epic event, where should they go? What should they do, sir? Uh, go to optionpit.com, uh, click our uh, mentoring page. And if you want to sign up for my Vol newsletter, We'll give you a month trial for free if you heard it here on the Option uh, Insider Radio Network. So we always got room for a few more people. So come and give it a come and give it a ride and tell me what you think. Click on the little boy sitting in the corner icon with a dunce cap on that says "Mentor Me." Click on that image <laughs> on the Option Fit website. <laughs> and if you don't have it, you should add it forthwith, sir. Because that we would... might, because your marketing is always spot on. That would be pretty funny, at the very least. All right, and a man who never has a dunce cap. And he never makes you wear one. He's just that nice of a guy. Uncle Mike, sir, if folks want to reach out to you, maybe they want to sit by the Fox with, River with you and talk some options while sipping some delicious Skippy's lemonade. Where should they go? What should they do? Hey, CharlesWealth.com. Uh, if you sign up and become a client of mine, if you're looking for someone to be a wealth manager who's not afraid of the option product, feel free to contact me. My information's on my website. And uh, with that in mind, uh, if you do become a client, I will throw in a $100 option pit gift card. The synergies, listeners, they are endless. And they get there like today. It's unheralded. But have a guy like Uncle Mike, having him sit by the river watching your portfolio so you can go do something else. That's, that's a lesser heralded but just as important value of a financial advisor. Check him out, stcharleswealth.com. And last but not least, holding down the hot seat admirably yet again. Mr. Last Dad of the Last Son of Krypton. You just kind of broke down a lot of the cool scans you can do for options over there at Fidelity. If folks want to kick the tires for themselves and maybe try out those those scans for themselves, Trey, where should they go? What should they do? Absolutely, yeah. Check out fidelity.com slash options. Learn a little bit more about our option uh, platform here and some of those uh, great scans that we have available for you. Uh, you can always give us a call, 877-907-4429. Feel free to ask for me or the Trading Strategy Desk. We'd love to talk to you uh, further about your uh, option strategies or tell you about some of the upcoming uh, classes that uh, our team offers here uh, to help you progress in your option trading. 
Check it out, fidelity.com slash options. They make it really easy to find. So you have only yourself to blame if you don't head over there. Fidelity.com slash options is the place to go to kick the tires and light the fires. Now, if you're saying to yourself, self, I need some more. I need some more analysis, some more volatility, all that fun stuff. Well, then we'll be back live in about an hour with some in-studio guests talking all the volatility in the world of crypto. Spoiler alert, there's a lot of it. Options, term structure, all that good stuff. Stay tuned for that. Otherwise, if you're listening after the fact on the podcast, you got a bunch of shows to choose from. Make sure if you haven't done so already, make sure you subscribe to the network. That's how you get everything. We'll keep you busy. I guarantee you that. And we'll see you back here in about an hour for crypto trading. Otherwise, crypto run. Otherwise, we'll see you back here on Thursday for this program, The Option Block. The Option Block is brought to you by Fidelity Investments. Fidelity's Option Trade Builder tool can help you confidently build an options trade in three simple steps. Just choose a strategy, select a contract, and then review the benefits and risks of the trade. Learn more about Option Trade Builder at fidelity.com backslash options. Options trading entails significant risk and is not appropriate for all investors. Certain complex option strategies carry additional risk. Before trading options, contact Fidelity Investments by calling 800-544-5115 to receive a copy of the characteristics and risks of standardized options. Fidelity Brokerage Services, LLC, member NYSC SIPC.